Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith filling in for John White. Today I'm at the Albuquerque Botanic Garden in the desert collection area where there are plants which will grow in southern New Mexico as well as all the way up here in Albuquerque. And the desert collection gardener, Catherine Annetta, is here to help us look at these plants and identify those which will grow well for you. Catherine, it's nice to meet you. Hello, Curtis. You've got a lot of pretty plants here. Thank you. And what would you suggest that people consider growing that grows here but also all the way down there? Well, one of the very colorful plants people can consider is the buddleia. The buddleia. It's a nice low water shrub. It comes in various forms. You have your upright variety, dark purples mm -hmm. to lavenders. And then you've got this one that we see here that's arching, flowering all along the stem, very beautiful, fragrant. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that won't even grow here but will grow in Las Cruces. And so there are some right. other species that work well in the southern part of the state that we can't even try to grow here, except right. in the conservatories. People should check at the local nurseries what is specific to their area. And you've got plants like Apache plume? Very attractive plant. In the springtime, you get a whitish pink feather blossom. Uh, and you've got a the beautiful little tiny white flowers. Beautiful. If you look at that, you notice that it's in the rose family. That's correct. And it grows pretty much all over the state, so it's good everywhere. Everywhere. And then you've got chamisa. Chamisa, very nice plant, very low water. Once it's established, you could just stop watering it, except in years of severe drought. And we need to be careful when we use the word chamisa, because there's chamisa and chamisa, depending on who you talk to. One of them is the rubber rabbit brush. The other one is the four-wing salt bush. A little confusing. The, the rubber rabbit brush is a better ornamental. The four-wing salt bush can be used in some really difficult locations, but it has a lot of problems and it's kind of a rank grower. It is. So we want to stay with the prettier ones. Yes. And then we've got uh, things like verbenas. Verbena, wide variety of colors. Um, you have your pinks, your deep purples, uh, and although some of them aren't native, they do very well in this climate. And they like the sandy soils. Love the sandy soils. Uh, Hymenopsis. Hymenopsis. It does uh, very well here. It's perky sue, uh, daisy-like, bright yellow flower. Kind of put your eyes out, it's so bright. It, it certainly would. Okay, it's kind of like the sandy soils, rocky soils. This is a good plant. It is. And you've got red buds. Of all things, a red bud tree. Red bud. And one of the nicest is probably the Texas red bud. Very mm -hmm. waxy thick leaf with a cerise colored bloom that will just knock you out in the springtime. And it likes the temperatures and the conditions. It grows well. It grows very well here. And then we've got cacti. All kinds oh, of cacti. All kinds of cacti. You have your red, bright red claret cup oh, cacti. They're beautiful. Very beautiful. You have all your opuntias. The prickly pears. The prickly pears. And one nice thing is you can take the tunas and make jellies and jams mm -hmm. from them. And we even have the choya. Some people like the choya cactus. Mm -hmm. And so there's a wide variety of cacti we can use. They're not the only thing you can grow in a xeriscape. Oh, no. But they certainly do have a place there. Oh, and we've got the globe mallows. Uh, the, and the orange globe mallow is a native. You can see it on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Some do better in the northern part of the state, but there's some that do extremely well in the south, especially that mm -hmm. pink one. The pink does very well, and there's also a red variety. Oh, the red one's pretty. It's really striking, good and tough, and in the right, if you put it in the landscape in the right way, it is a real centerpiece for the landscape. It is. And then there's the uh, endangered species, too. The very pale pink, yes. Seralcia. And so that's one that you can't go dig up. No. Okay, we've got the Mexican Evening Primrose. What a show this puts on. It is, it's just beautiful. It does have a tendency to be a bit invasive, but if you hold back the water, you can keep it in check. And also plant it in a place so that there are boundaries so that it can't cross. Exactly. Sidewalks, driveways will kind of hold it mm -hmm. in place. It will. And then we've got yuccas. You've got a lot of yuccas here. The differences in those that grow in the north and the south. Yes, there are. Uh, the Thomasoniana does very well here. Uh, there are a huge variety. The Bacatas do well here as well as in the south, the Daddle Yucca. There's a large variety to choose yeah, from. And those that are called a Palm Yucca. We really, those do really better in the south. They're the, for the southern part of the state. Mm -hmm. When we return from the break, we'll talk more about Xeriscape plants for the southern part of the state. Mm -hmm. 